history has been made today. Donald Trump is officially the President of the United States of America. And what does this mean for India? To actually answer that question, I'm joined by none other than Lalit Mansingh. Mr. Mansingh, thank you so much for joining us on Bloomberg Quinn. Mr. Mansingh, of course, has been a former Indian ambassador to the United States and also the former Foreign Secretary of India. Mr. Mansingh, I'd like to start by asking you the question on everyone's minds. Be it in terms of immigration, in terms of bilateral trade or free trade, and also in terms of security, what do you think this means for India now that Donald Trump is president? Well, I know that there's a lot of anxiety and uh, sometimes fear about uh, Trump presidency yeah. because so little is known about Mr. Trump's views on a lot of things. But if you narrow it down to Indo-US relations, I have no sense of anxiety because I think Indo-US relations are strong. They have survived Republican and Democratic uh, changes of leadership and I have full confidence that under a Trump presidency this uh, relationship will continue. Uh, what I expect is a short period of interruption in the dialogue largely because Mr. Trump will take his time to assemble his team and put them in place. Um, also that India is not a top priority for him. India is not a problem partner and therefore his attention will be on resolving the more immediate issues. But a couple of uh, positives have emerged from the campaign. Right. Firstly, the Democratic platform, sorry, the Republican platform, mm -hmm. their manifesto, has very warm words, words of praise about India. They have described India as a valued uh, strategic partner, uh, e strategic security and uh, economic partner. Um, there were also nice things said about uh, the possibility of Mr. Trump and Prime Minister Modi meeting and the former, s former speaker, Mr. Newt Gingrich, right. in one of his speeches said, Mr. Trump and Mr. Modi make a wonderful fit. So I think the chemistry between the two leaders will be good, knowing that they, are, they, they have similar ideological leanings and uh, they have many things in common. So I expect that Indo-US relations will remain strong as before. Uh, in fact, in some ways, it could also positively become better. But that we can discuss uh, uh, during the rest of the interview. Of course, you know, Mr. Mansingh, and when you talk about uh, international trade, it's important in terms of the relations between the major <laughs> powers around the world. Now, we know that Mr. Trump has some views on Russia some particular views on China and India in terms of how we're impacting their jobs and also in terms of Pakistan and how he wants to clamp down on terrorism. These were actually, this they sounded like political rhetoric in his campaigns, but now that he's president, clearly this would translate into something. Well, you know, uh, if you have studied American elections, there's a lot of rhetoric which doesn't translate into actual policy after the elections. Example, John Kerry when he was a presidential candidate was regularly doing India bashing and saying the same things that India is stealing the jobs from the Americans. But John Kerry as Secretary of State was completely different. I don't think it will be uh, very different in the case of Mr. Trump. Of course he said that Americans have lost jobs because other countries have been taking them away and India, China and he mentioned a few other countries. But the fact is he did reach out to the Indian American community he attended their rallies, said nice things about India, had nice things to say about the Indians in the United States. So I don't think he has a negative perception of India. That's good. Uh, secondly, Mr. Trump, like uh, Prime Minister Modi, is uh, pro-business. He's a businessman himself. And he sees the value of business relations. Mm -hmm. So I think on the trade front, we're going to see a lot of positive movement. Um, of course, uh, we are not affected by this, but uh, Mr. Trump has criticized the Trans-Pacific Partnership and NAFTA, NAFTA and trade agreements. We are not affected by that. We are not in any such group agreement with the United States. Uh, when it comes to foreign policy, uh, let's see the areas in which there might be some change. And I can think of two areas mm -hmm. where there are expectations that things might even be better. One is on counter-terrorism cooperation. And while 
the American administrations have been vocal in giving support to counterterrorism. That has not translated into 100% satisfaction for India because India's uh, terrorism comes basically from its neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And currently the government is putting this across to the international community to recognize that Pakistan is the primary source of international terrorism and we are its biggest victim. So in this situation, I expect that Mr. Trump, who is also very strong on security issues and has made it an election issue, will take a tougher line on Pakistan. Secondly, insofar as China is concerned, Mr. Trump has criticized China for his economic policies and therefore I think he will, uh, he will uh, harden his stand on China on economic issues. But he will also recognize that China has been a threat to the countries in the neighborhood in terms of its territorial claims, in terms of restrictions in the sea lanes of commerce and so on. So even on that front also, I expect that a new American administration will give uh, a greater support to India insofar as the threat from China is concerned. So I'm, I'm actually after a brief interruption right. in the relationship which is inevitable when there is a change of government, I expect that we will come back to a very strong relationship and uh, as I mentioned, possibilities even that it could be better in many areas. Interesting, Mr. Mang Singh. You know, it's actually very interesting that you say that because clearly from his electoral campaign, uh, Donald Trump had this very different approach towards Russia as when yeah. you compare him to any other That's presidential right. candidate. And then you talk about, uh, you know, how he might clamp down on things in Pakistan as well. And that would put India in a very sweet spot, wouldn't it? Uh, when relations between the US and Russia were getting strained, mm -hmm. we, it put us in a rather embarrassing position. And many in the strategic community felt that we shouldn't move that close to the United States and maybe we should get closer to Moscow yeah. and keep a kind of balance between our two friends. Rather than burn one of those bridges. That's right. And now with Mr. Trump himself wanting to improve relations with Russia, I think it's a it's, win-win uh, for us. Interesting, Mr. Man Singh. As a parting question, uh, you know, immigration has been a contentious issue across the pond with Brexit and of course with this election with talk of a wall being built I know you know with our visa situation is a little different but the basic sentiment being that you know it was a little protectionist and you know they didn't want outsiders coming in in either jurisdiction so with this Trump presidency now that has been announced do you think that he will clamp down on H-1B visas or you know on the Indian community that's really heading there well I think there's a there's a confusion here between immigration particularly illegal immigration mm -hmm. and uh, legal entry for business purposes. India's interest is not in the immigration policy of the United States. And Trump has been very strong on illegal immigration, particularly from Mexico. That policy is, is not uh, of relevance to India. What matters to us is what kind of visas are issued to our professionals who go there for uh, uh, short term and long term employment. Now the visa, uh, the visa restrictions are creating problems for Indian professionals in carrying out their business uh, obligations in the United States. And this is where uh, we have to put across our, our very strong view that visa restrictions on business professionals need to be eased for better business relationship between the two countries. There is also the allied case of the totalization issue, which is what the American government deducts from the uh, salaries of Indian professionals, which is supposed to be refunded. It is an amount which is close to $1 billion a year. But the Americans have not been refunding it because they feel that India does not have a social security system. So we want that to be resolved and the legitimate dues of Indian professionals should be given back to them. Now, uh, uh, this is not the same as illegal immigration. In fact, American uh, immigration laws have enabled 3 million people of Indian origin to settle down there as, as American citizens. We have no quarrels with that. Mr. Man Singh, thank you so much for such a candid chat and joining us on Bloomberg Quinn. My pleasure.